Hello everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to our Q3 FY24 earnings call. On this call, I'm joined with Mr. Gaurav Munjal, our Chief Financial Officer. Q3 has been a great quarter for investors and the broking industry. Nifty touched an all-time high and the overall industry saw an addition of more than 96 lakh DMAT accounts. The total DMAT accounts of the country stood at 13.93 CR. In Q3 FY24, we acquired 2.3 lakh customers, reflecting a 71% growth quarter on quarter, and our total customer base has reached 39.6 lakhs. Further, our market share in intermodal client acquisition has grown from 1.3% in Q2 FY24 to 2.4% in Q3 FY24. During the past quarter, our total average daily turnover grew, through, grew to 3.7 trillion rupees in 80% year-over-year growth. Our average client funding book stood at 317 crore, a growth of 18% quarter-on-quarter, and the mutual fund AUM reached, a, reached 801 crore, a 20% quarter-on-quarter growth. We are happy to report that we have achieved our lifetime highest revenue in Q3 FY24 of rupees 100.3 crore, and our profit after tax stood at 15 crore, a growth of 37% year on year. Further, we have ended nine months FY24 with a revenue of rupees 281 crore, and our PAT stood at 48.6 crore, a growth of approximately 68% year over year. This quarter has been a marquee quarter for our product. In the last earnings call, I had outlined that we have undertaken a, a, a major initiative to overhaul our product and tech platform. And I'm happy to report that we have taken significant steps in that direction. We have rebuilt and launched our entire product onboarding journey, placing a strong emphasis on UI and UX. We have introduced industry-first features such as reverse penny drop, account aggregator integrations, and API optimizations to significantly speed up the onboarding process. We enhanced the option chain by introducing support for various indices such as Sensex, Midcap Nifty, and Pin Nifty alongside Nifty and Bank Nifty. We introduced bulk order modifications, a game-changing feature which allows users to edit multiple orders simultaneously. This is a Game changer for high volume traders, marking an industry first launch. We also optimized our option chain journeys to support straddle and bulk orders, allowing users to place multiple orders effortlessly with a single click directly from the option chain. Last quarter, we had also discussed various initiatives which we have undertaken to overhaul our MarTech stack. This is critical to help us scale and acquire more customers digitally. This quarter, we successfully implemented an omni-channel communication strategy, tailoring interactions to users and preferred channels. We curated the client communication plan that included best practices in terms of content, channel, and trigger time. Reducing the lead churn from 30 days to seven days to connect with users very early in their onboarding journey has led to better conversions. We have been actively focusing on scale while optimizing on lower funnel events, such as buy sell trades in FNO cash commodity segments. More such initiatives are underway as we build in the best in class digital engine to acquire customers at scale. As we discussed in the last quarter, we expect these initiatives to land in the coming quarter and also in the next quarter. Finally, I want to end the call with restating that we are a technology-first company. We are going to continue investing in new technologies, especially in security, AI, and data science, and build fresh product capabilities to further scale our digital-enabled revenue pipeline. We will continue to invest in MarTech and augment our customer acquisition in coming quarters to set the stage for future growth. With this, we would like to open the meeting to any questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Our first question comes from the line, 
Devrat Himat Singha from Augmenta. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, very refreshing to see, uh, you know, a good set of numbers. I just wanted to, uh, you know, I was not able to understand the ESOP bit and uh, how, you know, you're, you're continuously issuing uh, new ESOPs and taking approvals for that. So can you give us some guidance on, on what that looks like and what kind of expenses, uh, you know, can be incurred uh, because of that uh, going forward? That would be very helpful. And so after you answer this, I'll just come to my next one. Uh, so right now our ESOP is, uh, you know, at uh, we had get it approved from the shareholders and uh, the same has not been granted uh, uh, to the seniors as of now. Uh, but uh, currently it is approximately it is in the range of, you know, that uh, 60 to 80 lakh in a quarter, uh, which uh, going forward which may increase, uh, uh, which may increase going forward and uh, uh, because once it is granted only then we can take into the final tender of Okay, so what kind of what kind of impact could we see this having on the employee costs? Like over overall, uh, if you can uh, you know shed some light out there. Uh, so uh, that depends upon the you know the numbers and uh, the people who are going to be joined in future. Uh, so once it is granted, but yes, we need to uh, follow that you know that India's and all. And but generally in in that case, major of the costing comes in first year, and then uh, it's reduced in second and third year. Okay, okay. Th thank you, sir. And uh, so one uh, one other question I have is that, you know, we are planning to move from T plus one to T plus zero, uh, say by March, April. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think uh, it can be seamlessly implemented and uh, do you think this would uh, increase volume significantly going forward? So, first of all, I think, yeah, it can be seamlessly implemented, but I, I don't see it impacting the volume. If anything, it impacts more, it does introduce slightly more liquidity in the market, but uh, the measured impact is not really going to be that significantly high. But I do believe this is a good step forward in terms of clean governance. No, right, sir. Absolutely. Know, sir, and just one last question, sorry, how much free yeah. cash do you have on your balance sheet? Uh, so it I would be approximately uh, 70 to 80 crores right now. 70 to 80 crores. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. If I have any questions, I'll come back in line. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Our next question comes from Krishna Prashad, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, sir. Am I, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah. Hi, sir. Yeah. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Can I for good set of numbers. Sir, I want to know that your market share has reduced in this quarter. So, any reason, sir? Uh, uh, what has reduced? Market share. Market share. Market share. Yeah. Yeah. So, over the past, you know, if you look back at the history of uh, 5 pesos going back through the start of the year, right, uh, from June of last year, we actively were in a phase where we wanted to improve our digital efficiency. So as a result of which, you know, we really, the focus was on, uh, you know, was on essentially achieving more profitability and getting the system to a state where we can again get back to scale. So as a result of which, our goal was really not to acquire customers. See, it's very easy to throw money and get customers in the market. Everybody is doing it. There's no rocket science. We believe that's a, that's not a strategy we want to pursue just yet. As a result of which, after I joined, we made an active decision to actually decelerate growth. So whatever you see is completely planned. And I expect the market share to stabilize only in a few quarters because it doesn't make sense to continue spending money when we are not able to get the ROI we want. So right now, the growth that I'm reporting, that is coming at the right level of unit economics which we can support. So the key is going to be to scale that. And that's the reason why you see a deceleration. And you will expect okay. to see this next quarter as well before we stabilize. Okay, sir. So, sir, uh, so in the medium, <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. No problem. Yeah. yeah. So in the, yeah, in the next uh, 
uh, eight months or next year. So, do we have any target in terms of OPM? OPM at uh, operating margin at thirty percent in that manner. So, any guidance on that? See, we cannot. We don't uh, give any guidance on that. But this year, as I have said, you know, in the previous earnings call, this year and the subsequent, you know, and the subsequent quarters to come are going to be all about scaling and growth. So there will obviously be new costs. There will be costs in terms of client acquisition. There will be costs in terms of ESOPs. There will be, uh, you know, those kind of expenses, which lot of which will be one time in just getting the getting the process and the build up to scale. So I would say that, you know, as of now, we don't give any particular guideline, but we will obviously be within the same range as we have always been historically. You know, I don't see that changing per se. Okay, sir. Thanks so much and all the best to Sariwar future, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Mitesh Kamdar from Aditya Equity Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. I had the question regarding the other expenses. There is a marked increase in other expenses this quarter. Any reason for the same? Oh, there is a marked, marked increase in other expenses this quarter. So actually, uh, as you see that other ex advertisement cost is, uh, is a part of other expenditure. Uh, and our acquisition, you know, has grown up from 1.35 lakh to uh, 2.32 lakh. So, yes, it is in the line of uh, the acquisition. Okay, fine. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Our next question comes from Deepak Podar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes. Yep. Uh, thank you. First, uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, opportunity. So, um, so I'm I'm a little confused. I mean, uh, in the sense, uh, now you spoke about that uh, we had planned to de decelerate the market share, and uh, and at the same time, our other expenses and ad advertisement cost is increasing, and 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 our our uh, the number of client addition is also increasing. So, so, so I'm not able to understand. I mean, um, at this, at one time we are planning to decelerate market share, and, and, and at the other time our cost is increasing, and, and and even our gross addition in clients is also higher. So, so, so where is this mismatch we are talking about? Yeah. So, see, the gross are only increasing in this quarter. Okay. So, the decision to decelerate it was taken around in June of last year. So it's been going on for the last two quarters, and only now we have decided to accelerate again. So the cost increase you are seeing is from there. Now, because of this, what has happened is because the com because we uh, the reason we decelerated. It's very important to remember this: is that the reason for deceleration is because we wanted to improve our digital acquisition engine. We wanted to build the product journeys, and we wanted to get that right. So we made a that is the conscious call, you know. So now we are at a point where we believe that in a in a quarter or so we will be ready to ramp up the engine and scale it further. And this quarter onwards, we have just started that work. That's why you see the cost going up, and that's how you see the acquisition numbers where they are today. Okay. Uh, so so you uh, you do expect your market share, I mean, which has declined from 3.2 to 2.8 percent in this quarter, to further decline yeah. in the fourth quarter, right? Yes, I do. I and from first quarter, you expect, uh, uh, I mean, to uh, to see the upward trajectory in terms of your market share. Yes, and I, and see, I also want to add one more point, right? If you look at most businesses, which are like ours, right, mm -hmm. you will see that generally when the deceleration happens, you grow only at the rate at which you incrementally acquire customers. This is the rule of thumb. So if you take Correct. any leading player, generally you will grow only at that rate because no one has a secret sauce to acquire better customers than anybody else, whether it is us or the next two players above us. There is absolutely no differentiation in the acquisition engine whatsoever. So whether you see 10 lakh acquisitions per month, 30 lakh or even 1 crore acquisitions per month, the reality is it's ultimately just a financial game and nothing else more than that. Now the key is to play that we have to get digitally highly, highly efficient because the differentiator is who has a better engine, not who can invest more capital. So the way we are approaching it is that because for 5 paisa, 
we for many years we really never invested in technology we never really invested as much as we wanted i mean we always are a technology company but we never really it was not so much of a priority so it was always uh, you know it, it, the the engine was not built to scale but in these last 6 months we have put a lot of effort in getting the engine back up where we believe now in a quarter or so we will increase so the deceleration is happening because of clients which have been acquired in the last quarter and the quarters before anybody who is acquired who we have acquired now you know we are seeing excellent performance from them and we will see their impact only in the coming quarters because generally it takes the client a quarter or two to get settled in you know just to learn the system to do the to get acclimatized and you know they look for the right opportunity so there is a cool off period and that's why i'm saying that the market share will will dip before it corrects again you know okay okay but but uh, i understood that point but i think in in the, in the last call we were uh, we were of the view that we are looking to double our market share in in uh, in in one year and accordingly our revenue growth will also likely to follow i mean may not have one to one one is to one is to one kind of a correlation but maybe one is to 0.5 kind of a correlation or 0.5 0.7 uh, so so is there any change in the view on that front and um, how, how do we see that going forward no there is no change in the view is just that for accelerating at that pace we can only make that call quarter over quarter you know there are some quarters where we want to launch something then there are some quarters where we want to defer it so we are not time boxing ourselves in the sense that if it makes no business sense we are not going to spend the money is as simple as that even if it means we have to stay away from the market so is the right now the market is hot you know everybody is acquiring a lot of customers if you look at the top 3 the numbers they have reported it's through the roof right but mm-hmm. we believe it's not the right time to enter the market so for us the game plan is we want to wait and watch you know and also we okay. want to get our uh, our technology systems in order so what i am you know what you will see though is you will see a systematic increase in our acquisition plan and we will definitely have a road map to end the year that is next financial year as the numbers we talked about so if i 25 and we are looking at what 5 to 6% kind of a market share Uh, would that be a fair assumption see i don't want to put any number to it but it will definitely be 2x what we have today you know the number is again it depends on the quality of customers also that we acquire okay you know? okay and accordingly if, if we are getting, yeah. we can give away free etfs and get 5% like some other competitors have done you know we can okay. run incentives and get, you know there are other uh, security companies which have reached 6 7% market share but that's not meaningful because it doesn't result in any impact to bottom line so it has to be 5% with the right kind of profitability and uh, other metrics so please correct. remember that right fair enough correct and and revenue growth should follow right i mean with some lag yes exactly and that so, is what you're seeing in this, in this quarter as well right you see you will see this kind of trajectory Yes. So, what sort of correlation we are looking at? I mean, would it be 0.5 or one is to one correlation? Can it be possible? I mean, in terms of market share and your revenue? No, those kind of correlations cannot be had in this industry. It's too immature to have that kind of. You can get that at a Hindustan Unilever, not here. Okay. okay. Here, the market is very new. Fair enough. And uh, and your other expenses, I think, can you give the breakup of your fixed cost and the client acquisition cost? out of this i think 50 odd crores we have spent uh, so uh, actually uh, uh, approximately 45 to 50% is related to the uh, advertisement and the customer acquisition basically and approximately 30 to 35% is our it cost and rest is the other business cost this is so the for, uh, major which i have so 45 to 50% is your client acquisition cost right yes this includes everything that Okay okay and just my my last query uh, in terms of your margin you do expect to have some softness in your margin um, largely driven by uh, uh, the cost that is expected to come on account of your effort to scale up the business right uh, and on the investment that we are looking to do in the tech side correct that is correct yes okay but is there any rough range that this is the i mean minimum threshold that we do expect that it should not go below that level i mean uh, either it's for 25% whatever i mean any threshold uh, uh, 
minimum threshold no, that is, is a, we are in a we are a growth company so there is, there is no such range per se some mm-hmm. quarters it can be high some quarters it will be low there is no such normalizations that we work for we work for certain level of unit economics and certain high level operating margins everything else is i think more sensitive information which we don't disclose in the call okay um, fair enough i think uh, that's it from my side all the way best to you thank you so much thank you our next question comes from vivek joshi from free tones please go ahead yeah so good afternoon and uh, i guess congratulations for achieving the milestone of 100 crores on the revenue side so okay. sir i was just going through the data for jan 22 and jan 23 so the number of active clients which we have at 5 plus i uh, reduced from something 12 lakh to 5 lakh uh, and our market share has also fallen and from sixth largest broker to i think we are right now at 12th largest broker so where do we see sir this degrowth stopping and the growth picking up yeah see that is why the company pivoted you know i joined the company in uh, q1 end of q1 last year and the main reason was to repivot and rechange this this uh, this curve right so obviously as i mentioned that a lot of the deceleration that you see is very much in line with the strategy that was planned and what i see is that over the coming quarters i do see the trends changing and i do see these the numbers coming back to those levels but it will take us a little bit of time as we figure out what is the right game plan to both exe- you know to both launch our uh, our new products which we are working on as well as also build and scale the new technology stacks as well as the martech stack that we are continuing to build okay but sir any logical reason for just stopping the inflow for the client because uh, every broker out there is kind of acquiring customer like anything and we are following yeah, reverse strategy so losing 80% of the customers they acquire so you have to remember that acquisition is not a is a is is a, is a very meaningless metric you know we have to look at ultimately the thing that matters is whether we can curate that customer over a long period of time so it, it we want to make sure that when we scale we have the right engagement story for the customers over a period of time and for that there has to be proper digitization of our journeys in terms of digitization up until last year we were not as uh, you know we were not amongst the top brokers at all the top, the top digital brokers whereas now our first objective is to get to that stage only then all these things can be uh, worked on you know acquiring uh, acquiring more customers and scaling and if you take an example if you look from uh, august july or august we were doing roughly only 25000 accounts per month and now we are doing nine, you know we are touching almost 80 90000 accounts per month so there has been a massive growth and this growth i do expect to scale but there will be both cost and it will take a little bit of time for the revenue to materialize because there is a lead time of a quarter or so before the clients come in and start trading and things like that you know so sir can you expect something around uh, roughly a lakh or some bulk of figure for the monthly addition for the client for the active side of the investors or the traders see we don't discuss those kind of details here we can only i can only give you the you know you, you have the prior history you you have looked you know you have the prior data that we always publish in the earnings call you can you can work backwards from there you know but we don't comment about our long term uh, strategy here okay as far as sir i remember i think something around in 22 uh, june 22 we discussed over the figure that something uh, around uh, you know One lakh addition is what we targeted, and then we reverse to the strategy and we stop the client addition. So that was the context I was referring to. So any such kind of uh, figure you like to, uh, you know, share with us? No, no. As I told you, those taking the number in isolation is not a very useful metric to look at this business. Okay. Okay, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our next question comes from Daval Gada from DSP. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, first is uh, relating to uh, the uh, the point on market share. So uh, yeah, you talked about you know uh, the digital strategy, getting the digital strategy right. Uh, you also talked about uh, 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 which is internal. Uh, the second point you mentioned was around uh, uh, competitive competition being very aggressive on on a customer acquisition, and you chose to. Uh, participate less uh, in this market compared to your, uh, uh, you know, the opportunity that you wanted to capture. And uh, lastly, mm -hmm. you also talked about uh, getting the right uh, unit economics uh, in place. Just trying to understand, uh, you know, say about uh, uh, two or three quarters from now, do you think all of this will be in place for you to, uh, you know, uh, sort of at a design level uh, start growing, uh, you know, quarter on quarter uh, in a more, uh, I would say, um, a more planned manner, uh, even assuming yeah. competition is far more intense, etc. Yeah. Or is there anything else that one needs to be cognizant of uh, that it, there can be some more delay or, or you know, some other variable to, to work out for? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. So, so see, this is the main reason that in every quarter I give a very detailed product update, you know, and a very detailed business update as well because we talk about the underlying engine and the improvements we are doing both on product and tech as well as on the business side. So as you have observed, right, is that there is, uh, a, you know, our goal is in Q2, which is something I have said in the earlier call last quarter, in Q2 of FI25, we are gearing up for a launch of our major product, you know, and there's a lot of improvements planned before then, but that's where we plan on, uh, you know, uh, launching our new services and new products. And this is something I've already uh, mentioned in the earlier calls. So to that end, we want to gear up for that. So for the next three months, four months, regardless of what is the client acquisition in the market, whether the, you know, whoever is, uh, you know, the, the top private players, you know, whatever they acquire is not very much meaningful to me because we believe that there is enough growth in the market. We are barely at sitting at a 4% market penetration. Even if they win the whole race within the next two years, that is not to say that they're going to be around in five years from now. Because five years ago or 10 years back, you know, the, 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 the market, the, the entire landscape was different and now it's very different. So it's going to continue to change. So it's very important that we build that playbook. So our first, obviously, our major launches are coming up in the coming quarters, which is why we give detailed product updates. And also, as I said, if you look at our marketing engine, uh, in my very first earnings call, I had said that we are going to scale, right? And at that time, we didn't give any indication. But you can see that we have scaled from 25,000 to now ending at about uh, 80,000, 90,000, right? So I expect us to follow that trajectory. Now, sometimes it may not be as steep. If we, if we hit snags along the way, if we realize that the product development is not moving as fast, then we will scale, we will, uh, you know, we will descale accordingly. It's very critical for us to not, uh, you know, to not scale for the heck of scaling, you know. Uh, this is very useful. This one follow-up uh, to this and, and to understand it better is, let's say, uh, you know, uh, by August, September or, or October, whenever the new, uh, you know, stack is, is in place, the new design is in place, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. do you expect uh, it to, you know, sort of, you know, uh, go exponential from where you were, let's say, before this planned decision that you talked about, and, uh, and therefore, you know, uh, you're sort of building your platform and your stack, everything in place for a much bigger journey uh, compared to, you know, where you were, let's say, uh, four quarters back. Uh, uh, would that be fair? Like, uh, it should Correct. be yes. comparable to what the top three or two players uh, are doing right now in the market. Is that fair or uh, there's still some more thing to be done yes. even beyond that, which may take another few uh, quarters of a year? I mean, just... How, how to no, no, it won't take beyond that. It won't take beyond that. It is exactly what you outlined. See, and uh, and uh, to give you some sense of our track record, you know, when I joined the company in June, our incremental market share and uh, you know acquisitions they they stood hardly at twenty five thousand accounts, some something like one percent. You know, obviously we have doubled that while keeping our health metrics relatively constant. So this gives you some sense of what kind of north star we are looking at. 
So what we have realized is that, and I have run a couple of other broking firms as well, so I can give from my own experience, is that it is extremely critical to not uh, to scale only when the digital infrastructure is actually ready. Otherwise, you know, success can mask a lot of the other inefficiencies digitally. So, and it is not, and it won't be scalable. So for us, it is very important because we are, we've just started the digitization journey and uh, it is very important to keep continuing to build that and to scale only in accordance with that, you know, to uh, to support future growth. So this is how we see it. But as you rightly said, we take around Q2 yes. as we go ahead and launch that and then beyond. Yes. Understood. Very useful. So just one, one last thing, uh, uh, you know, on the unit economics. Uh, so, uh, you know, and this uh, and somewhat relates to the point uh, that we mentioned about previous organization. Uh, you know, so obviously they have a sort of uh, uh, significant head start uh, and, and sort of a strong, uh, you know, uh, cash flow uh, at this point of time, which helps them uh, slightly be, uh, you know, more generous in new, new acquisition, uh, etc. So, uh, and from where you start this journey, uh, do you see that this uh, unit economics, the, the ideal unit economics to be uh, you know, different for this company, especially in the first few years? Uh, of the journey, uh, uh, let's say FY25, 26, and thereafter, yeah. you know, somewhat stabilize to, to where some of the, you know, uh, other leading players are, or we think there is something uh, out there which, uh, I, I, which they are not uh, tapping in the right way and which uh, you will be able to, you know, uh, optimize in, in much, much better fashion. Uh, I mean, just some thoughts around how one should think about more, uh, next two, three year unit economics and, and then beyond. Yeah. See, we can only comment about our business. So I'll tell you that. That first of all, see, our business is very different than some others. Okay, we are not. Uh, we don't have any B two B business or anything like that. Okay, so we are not showing any. Uh, you know, our our RPCs and our uh, customer metrics are completely digital, both sourced and serviced, and also operated off. We are. We don't have any kind of a B two B model in place. Secondly, like unlike some of the other uh, privately held bro uh, brokers, you know, we don't have a focus on mutual fund or anything of that sort. Where because, and I don't even believe that those journeys are very meaningful for our product. So from the get-go, our, our uh, uh, you know, the way we think about, the, the way I'm thinking about the business here is that we really want to get the core journeys correct and we want to focus on exclusively fully digitally engaged and fully driven by the product experience to launch more features in the coming quarters. And I believe that as far as your question on unit economics is concerned, you can do the math with, I mean, everybody's number is at least uh, some numbers are public and now even Zerodha's numbers are public. So you, uh, we don't want to talk about them, but if you, basically everybody's publishing the numbers in some shape or form. And you can see that everyone's RPC is down. There is not a single one who has been able to keep the RPC at the, you know, at the same growth rate that they saw even a year and a half ago. So that tells you that the quality and the deceleration has been much more rapid than the acquisition rate. So it's very important that we do a very critical signal to noise test before we acquire. This is why, unlike any strategy I've executed in the past, in Phi Pesa, the focus is very much on that. And that is how we are looking at growth. So I believe that's the only way to responsibly grow from here on out. And as far as the lead time to catch up with other, other uh, brokers and all is concerned, see, the simple thing is that these kind of, uh, with the right capital inc infusion, you know, anybody can catch up with anybody in no time. And you have seen the example, you know, where uh, a privately listed broker went from nowhere to number two, you know, uh, over number number two or number three last year, right? And that privately held broker really was not able to scale. So I think there's, there's, uh, th those kind of metrics are not very meaningful. The key is can you build that stickiness on the platform and the right digital engine? Got it. Very useful and which are all the better. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
Hi. Our next question comes from Nagraj Chandrasekhar from Emerge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. Uh, you answered most of my questions. Just I wanted some clarity on note 5 in the notes to accounts. There is a reversal of around 7 crores, uh, which is taken as an expense this quarter. Uh, what exactly is this and why is it being reversed? Uh, actually, that has marked uh, not for this quarter, that has marked for the uh, previous year. Uh, because we have to give the comparison. Uh, in the, I mean, December and the, uh, December 22 and in, in complete financial year, we have done a reversal of 7 crore rupees. Uh, this is, this was in line with, you know, SEPI circular that you need to reverse the uh, upfront margin penalty which we have charged from the customers. And this is in the same line uh, which they have, you know, given instruction to every broker. So every broker has done that and uh, we have also done that. Okay, but it's a non-cash expense that's uh, relevant to a prior year that's taken this quarter, right? Uh, it's actually, the question is pretending to last year. First of all, it is not, it okay. is nothing, there is nothing that you do for this current year. Uh, the second is, it's a, uh, no, it was not expenses, it is an income which a brokers has recorded in an earlier period. Uh, and uh, after the SEBI involvement, uh, they had to reverse it. Okay, so your cash expenses are broadly flat QOQ. Your actual cash expenses, if you remove this one off at around 43 crores, they've not changed yeah. much. But your uh, okay. your customer relations have gone up significantly to the 80,000 a month cadence. So, uh, so you you mentioned earlier in the call you said the industry is pretty commoditized, uh, but you you have this cadence of 80,000 a month now. Do you think will be profitable clients for you? Will trade often with you going forward? Just any any further clarity on what you are doing specifically to make them come to you, what you are doing product or margin or other incentive guys to come to them to trade with us. Where else they are trading, uh, who else are they trading with them, why exactly they are coming to us, who, who are they coming to us from. Any sort of color without any, um, you know, whatever you can divulge given comparative uh, there is your voice is not proper audible. Can you, I mean, Vivo, if you are uh, speaking with your uh, uh, yeah. earphone and something else, so can you change that because it's not proper audible? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just want to understand the, the the clients that we have started adding now, and we say we will ramp this up. We said they will they are going to be profitable. So why exactly are they coming to us? What are we doing products or incentives on margins and otherwise that are making them come to us? Yeah. And who are they yeah. coming to us from uh, mostly? Yeah, the the, uh, the market acquisition, you know, we have obviously a multi-pronged strategy. Some of them have come, a lot of customers come to us from other brokers where they're not getting quality of service or better product experience. And uh, uh, some of them come from new client acquisitions. We really don't really, uh, you know, discern at that level. For us, it's important that, you know, as the product experience has gotten much better, you know, our app rating, for example, has dramatically improved, right? So, and the core journeys have improved. So, we see, organically, we see people coming and obviously from our own efforts as well, that is showing a lot of, uh, that that is uh, driving a lot of inbound traffic. Other than that, I think the, the uh, other features which, uh, we, you know, which, which, which you described, they are, uh, we think like those are uh, table stakes for us to execute the business. You know, that's, that, that's not really a core, you know, that, there's no core value proposition there. You know? I understand. Just uh, one more balance sheet clarification on the free cash. Uh, can you give, give a sense on the September cash we had on balance sheet? Uh, uh, how that translates to free cash for us, how much is margin, how much is client margin, how much is free cash. It's just one of the further clarity on that. Uh, so approximately, uh, you know, that uh, we have a, a 500 crore net worth uh, and uh, out of that approximately 420 is a liquid net worth. Uh, and uh, another thing, we have a margin in exchange approximately, you know, uh, 17, 1800 crore. And uh, now with the service circular and the rules that every uh, client money is with the uh, exchanges, and apart from that, we have also kept uh, 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 margin in, in FD form. Okay. So your free cash, including the margin, is the 70 crores or is it more? 
No, it's a 70 crore. Yes, it's a 70 crore, but actually you can't say it's a free cash. Uh, it's a cash which you may require at any point of a time. If the market is volatile, then you need to give to the exchanges for the margin purpose. Uh, so not the, exactly it's a free cash. It is a safety cash which we have, a safety margin cash which we have, uh, so that uh, in volatile market we can put more in exchanges. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Daval Gada from DSP. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, again. So just uh, a couple of uh, other questions. Uh, one relating to the uh, you know acquisition of clients uh, from uh, IFL uh, uh, Securities. Uh, what's the update on that? And also uh, on a steady state uh, basis for next year, what should one think about uh, from an employee cost perspective? If you could give some uh, uh, you know clarity, excluding the soft costs, uh, I know that that's a variable. But just outside of that, yeah. what's the uh, more stable number to look at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think for the first one, the the uh, we are uh, you know uh, the discussions are on with the regulators, and uh, once we don't have any uh, further update really to report on that, once we hear back, we will be obviously uh, announcing. You know, so the discussions are on, and okay. uh, I, I expect it to take a little bit more time. Thanks. Right? Now regarding the costing. See, uh, as I mentioned, right, we have most of the cost for employee uh, growth in the sense the team size, the team calibration. I would say we are pretty well staffed. We are pretty well, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are pretty well actually staffed up from a human capital point of view, especially on engineering and product. And that's been the focus. Now, there may be expenses on uh, the uh, other teams, you know, like call center sales, whatnot. But those I expect to be very much in line with our growth. And I expect, more importantly, I expect those to only grow uh, with revenue. You know, I don't expect a, too much of an upfront hit. Now, ESOP, as you very rightly pointed out, we have not taken any ESOP costs at all so far. And we expect that, we expect to take that sometime, uh, you know, as, you know, in, obviously in the coming quarter or so. Because that's something that uh, as a, is a part of our uh, long-term plan for incentivization of uh, employees, you know. But that typically as a company, we only do that once a year. And this historically, we have done it only once a year and at the March, April time frame, you know. And, and so, so just, just to be clear on, on the ESOP calls, uh, that would likely come in uh, first half of next year uh, in a meaningful way and then get spread over the uh, following years in a more uh, cal uh, normal way. I mean, so there will be a, yeah. a large uh, cost, non non cash cost, uh, which can come in the first half of next financial year. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes. the way you know that India's works. Put up juice and you you heard the answer. Sorry, no, I missed it. Sorry. No, no, you, you are right, absolutely right, which you are saying, because that's the way that India's works. Most of the cost comes in first year, and then uh, it's followed by the second and third year. So yes, we will see the cost Understood. in the uh, either in Q4 of this quarter or in like most likely in Q1, but there could be some in Q4 also, but not beyond that. And the rest will get split over uh, subsequent years, as you as uh, Gaurav was mentioning. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from Tinnai Nema from Ravian Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Um, so, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, as you said that you are only interested in acquiring high-quality customers, the ones that stick around. So, uh, could you help us understand uh, who exactly are, uh, you know, the, the high-quality customers? Um, is, it, is the stickiness determined by the kind of services they avail? For example, is it that um, the FNO trading customers are more volatile than the ones who simply invest in equi uh, equities, uh, any any color on client profiling or any trends that you see? Yeah, I mean, we, this is a, this is very sensitive to our core product, uh, you know, to our core business strategy. So obviously we cannot comment on this, but, but I'll just give you some broad guidelines, right? I mean, as you, as, as, as we have seen, the, there are a lot of new entrants in the market. Most of them are FNO players. Most of them come in and they experiment with it. 90% of them will leave the system. 
and uh, for the from the ones you have who are left they will rise up the food chain and they eventually give more rpc than everybody else that's typically the client profile and behavior and uh, there are many strategies to retain customers you know one of them is obviously you pursue a super app strategy uh, the other one is uh, the way the private players are going about it you know uh, where you build like a good portfolio of alternate adjacencies uh, just as you know the other the grow exa has an excellent mutual fund business right so you kind of build up something like that and go but for us we are not looking at any of those plans because we believe that the audience we are after and the market we want to curate is really exclusively for traders and fno customers so for them we believe that there's a different playbook that has to be thought out and that market is actually a, is nobody has a handle on that market today neither of the top four players so that is something that we have to work on actively you know got it sir thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions please press star and one on your telephone keypad ladies and gentlemen if you have any questions please press star and one on your telephone keypad there are no further questions now i hand over the floor to narayan gangadhar for closing comments thank you very much for joining our quarterly for joining our quarterly earnings call we look forward to meeting you all again next quarter and keeping you abreast on the progress if you have any further questions please email ir@rate5pesa.com have a wonderful rest of the day thank you thank you sir ladies and gentlemen this concludes your conference call for today thank you for your participation and for using dur sabas conference call service you may all disconnect your lines now thank you and have a pleasant evening